All right, so today what we're gonna do is a bumblebee arrow frog setup. Uh, this cage I've already started to set up just because honestly this part is kind of the boring part. Uh, this is a Zoom Med 12 by 12 by 18 glass terrarium. It's got the screen top here, a little bit of ventilation up here. So while it's, it is gonna allow for some ventilation, it's not gonna be so stagnant or so well ventilated that you can't keep the humidity high in here for dart frogs. Down here, you can see I've got the layer of Zoom Med clay hydro balls. Um, I used about half a bag. The stuff is also on our website at www.llreptile.com. I only used about half a bag. You really don't need a super thick layer of the hydro balls. As you can see, I only did about a one inch layer. And then you can either do the polyfoam like I did here. Uh, this is just basically separating your drainage layer from the substrate that you put in there. Or you can use the specially made ZooMed terrarium mesh. It's 12 by 12 for the size that would, you would use for this size cage. Um, I just like the polyfoam just because it's easier for me to use. It's a little bit, um, it's basically you can just cut it to fit. We sell them in two by one or two foot by one foot sheets. So they're really easy to cut to fit. And then in the back here, I've got some Zoom Med forest tile background. This stuff just looks nice and it gives a nice texture for the dart frogs to actually climb up, which they will do once in a while. Um, the bumblebee arrow frogs in particular do like to come out and they will come out and sit and they're kind of, they're gregarious. They like hanging out with other dart frogs, especially each other. Uh, so if you keep a small group of them together, give them lots of stuff to climb on, they will actually be out quite often. Up top here, I've got the Zoom Ed naturalistic terrarium hood. This, this uh, particular hood fits perfectly on the top of the cage. Um, and as you can see, you can just have it resting right here on top of the screen. And then the light that I've got inside is the Zoom Ed Reptisun 5.0, the 13 watt. This is just a smaller size compact bulb that works perfectly for um, these size cages. You don't really, really need a ton of light or UVB for your dart frog. So this kind of light here, once it warms up, illuminates the cage really nice, provides enough UVB, but it's gonna be just a little bit smaller than the larger um, traditional compact fluorescent that ZoomEd was making before. So this works really, really nice for this kind of cage and setup because you just don't need a ton of light or power for it. Um, it is only a 12 by 12 by 18 cage. It doesn't need to be super duper bright in there. So now that we've got all of this set up, what I'm going to do is put in the substrate. Um, I'm going to use Zoomed Eco Earth. This stuff is a nice uh, coconut fiber substrate. You can plant stuff in it. It's fairly sterile. It doesn't mold. It holds moisture really well. It's pretty much perfect for creating living vivariums. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm adding that layer of Eco Earth. So I just put a little thin layer at first, just because I want to figure out how I'm going to set up the cage first. Um, I've selected here a few different plants that I could try putting in. Um, this is a nice viney kind of plant that'll kind of provide some ground cover, and then this is a little fern that'll be nice and bushy. Um, I've also over here got some cork and wood pieces. So we'll see here how I want to set this up just because then we want to basically use as much of the, the height here as possible and still make it possible for the frogs to also oh. climb up. So, what I'll do, actually what I'm going to do is one of my favorite tricks, which is to create multiple levels by creating a planter of sorts. So what you do is you wedge a piece of cork or something in a corner, Add your eco earth, make it nice and full, and then we'll do our fern in here. Pack that in. When you're making a vivarium like this, you're going to want to not be afraid to get your hands dirty because just using your hands to get the dirt packed in here is going to be the easiest way to get everything to look the way you want it to. Uh, when it comes to these, I'm a really big fan of keeping them really simple. I don't like putting a lot of water features in mine just because it can make it a bit harder to maintain. When you have just a plain vivarium that doesn't have any water features, this will last you for at least a year or two, if not even longer, before you have to do any kind of major maintenance within the cage. Um, I've actually got a couple of vivariums at home 
that I haven't cleaned out in at least a couple of years. I pretty much set them up, maybe do some spot cleaning, but I don't actually replace any of the bedding or anything. I might add a little bit extra, but I don't replace any of it uh, at all, <laughs> pretty much. That's the whole reason you create a vivarium like this, is that the drainage layer, the plants, all of that combines to make it so you never have to clean it out completely. You just clean the glass, feed the animals, spot clean poop if you see it, and that's really it. Um, so let's see. And then what I also wanted to do, and then we'll do another little planter up here for this. And there, and you can see the, this plant kind of just falls over naturally, and that's why I picked this one. If you have the opportunity to go pick out plants in person, you can do so. We also carry all these plants on our website. Um, this is actually going to go back here. Um, these are just the little four inch pot tropical plants uh, and we actually carry quite a few of them. This is one of the ferns. This is just a regular tropical plant. There we go. And then And the whole reason that I'm so focused on having these kinds of pieces of wood in there is that I want to put tillandsias in the cage. Tillandsias are called air plants, um, and that's because they really don't need any substrate to grow. Tillandsias like this, basically these little root bundles here gather moisture from the air, and that's pretty much how they grow. You just keep them in a nice humid environment. They don't need to be kept wet, they just need to be kept humid, and they thrive. They do great. Um, this one here is already blooming. Okay, so I managed to rearrange it a bit. I've got that, that piece of wood up there. I've got one here, another one here. Um, I've also added a little water bowl. Now, the thing about dart frogs and most frogs is that they actually don't drink water through their mouth. They absorb it through their cloaca or their butt. So what you're gonna wanna do to provide them with water is you're gonna wanna give them a nice shallow little dish of water. You don't wanna make it too deep because you don't wanna have to worry about them drowning. However, they do need a, a little bit of water that they can easily get into that you can also easily keep clean. They're going to want something that they can go sit into to stay hydrated um, because, again, they are going to have to absorb the water through their rear ends. So you just want to make sure that you keep it clean. And if you see them sitting in the water, they're probably drinking. Um, so just keep that in mind that they absorb water a little bit differently than we do. Uh, I do, however, want to add one more thing. Just because, again, I want to give them lots of space to go. This is um, this is a mag natural ledge. And then th what this is going to do is this is just going to make it so that everything stays in one spot and keeps that background in place. And then the frogs can climb up there if they so desire, which they probably won't, but just in case. And then just water everything down here. Do, 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 do. Make sure I keep it all nice and wet. And then the last thing is we're going to make a little bit of live moss. So that way we have a nice lush green um, bottom floor covering in here. And then that way you don't see all the roots and stuff. It just basically makes it look a little bit nicer to have a little bit of live moss. So we'll, I'll go ahead and make some of that. All right. So now, as you can see, I've added some green moss here just to make it the, again, just for humidity's sake and just to make it look a little bit nicer, the cool thing about live moss is that because it is living, keeping it moist and humid like this, it'll actually add a little bit to the ambient humidity within the cage. The humidity right on top of the moss is just going to be ever so slightly higher than in the rest of the cage. So again, for an animal like a dart frog that is really, really sensitive to humidity, adding all these little things here that help trap humidity in will make it a lot easier for them. So you can also see I added another tillandsia up here at the top, and again, that's just to give them a place to go hide right here under the leaves and all that kind of stuff. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do just to decorate it is I'm going to add a few of the aqua accents. These are actually supposed to be for beatables. Um, you could do either dark ones or light ones. Actually, I think I'm going to do these. Um, pretty much, you know, don't be afraid to get creative with where you get your decor, where you get the stuff that you're going to put in the cage. Um, the little rocks like this just kind of make it look nice. And then if you've got a deeper water dish, like this one kind of is, you can actually add some pebbles to the dish, and that helps make it so that it's not too deep for your frogs. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So there we go. 
Then that way too, adding the rocks and the pebbles in there helps make it so that there's no loose dirt or anything that ends up sticking to your frogs. Cause you don't want them to get dirty. You want them to look nice. All right, so there we go. So there's our nice completed setup here. We can actually fit two to three uh, dart frogs in this size cage. And what you can do too is when you offer them food, you can put a little piece of banana or a little piece of apple or something right up front. So that, that way the, the dart frogs, the basically what you do when you put a little piece of fruit up here is that when you feed them fruit flies, that establishes one set area that the dart frogs can go up and hunt down fruit flies. Um, basically all the fruit flies will congregate around that piece of fruit. And that just makes it really easy for your dart frogs to go find them and eat them. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of the bumblebee arrow frogs so you can see them hopping around here in the cage. Alright, so we're going to add a couple of them in here. And again, just because dart frogs in general can often be very territorial, I don't want to put in too many in here. While they're small at, the, at this size, they're kind of still small. They're not too big. Um, when they get to be older, they'll be about an inch and a half to two inches for large adults. And just two two-inch frogs is going to be quite a lot of a lot of frog <laughs> for this size cage. They can be territorial, so you don't really want to stress them by putting in too many dart frogs. These guys are found in tropical rainforests down in South America, uh, most often around the Venezuela area um, uh, and the adjacent countries um, for that part of South America. In the wild, they often inhabit, uh, they often are found at the edge of clearings and sunlight first thing in the morning, so they actually will end up hanging out in groups. When it comes to feeding them, you're going to want to feed them fruit flies. One trick for offering them fruit flies is to get a deli cup, much like this one here. Uh, this is one of our taller deli cups we have listed online. Get your cup of fruit flies, tap the top so you don't have any escaping. And then just gently tap the side there until you've got enough fruit flies coming out. You can also add a little bit of calcium. Uh, this is the Zoomed Reptivite. I'm just really fond of it because it's got vitamins and calcium in it. You don't really need a whole lot for dart frogs. Obviously, a tiny little animal like a dart frog doesn't need a ton of calcium. Um, however, I am dusting these guys with the expectation that some of the fruit flies in here are going to be in here for a little bit longer. So they'll end up running out of calcium on them. There we go. And then you just tap the fruit flies in. There we go. And as you can see, there's all your little fruit flies. And so when the dart frogs get hungry, they'll come up and eat them. Um, and then just because these guys were fed earlier today, they're not very hungry. And this is just one example of why you would have like a little piece of fruit up front. So there's a little feeding station for the dart frogs to come up and take advantage of. Now when you maintain these at home, what you're gonna wanna do is keep them in a range of temperatures between 70 and 85 at most. Now you don't want them to get too much cooler than 70 degrees, but you also don't want them to get too much warmer than 82 to 85. If your house is really cold, because right now it is winter here in Southern California, um, so if your house is getting really cold, like below 70 obviously, you're going to want to find some kind of way to, to heat them up. A lot, of t a lot of times just putting a heat pad on the side of the cage or even just a 40 watt bulb on top can help significantly in keeping the temperatures within the cage warm enough for your frogs to be comfortable. And then in summer, a lot of times what folks will do is they'll put ice cubes along the top of their cage to help cool them down. Uh, what you can also do is what we do here in the store for a lot of our cages. We actually run a fogger for a couple times a day. We'll have a, a Zoomed Reptifogger running um, about half an hour to an hour, at least three to four times a day, especially at the height of summer. Um, and then one last trick that you can do is freeze like a bottle of water and put the bottle of water inside a paper bag and you can actually keep that up against the side of the cage or even inside the cage if your house is really really hot. So again this is just a really basic setup for some dart frogs. You can keep the common bumblebee arrow frogs in here. You could do a rotus arrow frogs in here, a zurius, tinctorius. Um, again you would only though really be able to keep up to two frogs in here. Oh we've got the little guy up here eating. You can see him right up front. Um, so there's quite a few different species that you could keep up here in this size cage. Um, but however, for just about all of them, you're only going to be able to keep one or two in here. Um, at most three for some of the really small species. Um, if you want to keep more than one together, you're going to want to go up to a bigger cage. 
Uh, and then lastly, I, in this size cage, I would not recommend mixing species. At most, you might be able to add a, tr a very small tree frog or two. Um, but just for the sake of your dart frogs, to keep them healthy and happy, it's going to be best to just keep them with just one species per cage. Um, in a very, very large vivarium, you could mix a couple different species, but that's a completely different ball game. That's going to be a lot more difficult than keeping just one species. Um, and it is more difficult just because you are balancing the needs of several different kinds of frogs. So everything that you see in here, including this tank, we carry on our website. We do ship all of these items to your house, um, including the dart frogs. Obviously, we're not going to ship the dart frogs with your supplies. Uh, supplies are going to be shipped ground. If you're interested in ordering any of the things you see in the cage, go ahead and visit our website at www.llreptile.com. And lastly, if you want to find out more information about dart frogs, about cohabitating different species together, about creating living vivariums like this, we do include articles about these kinds of things in our online magazine called The Reptile Times. If you want to sign up for that, if you want to check it out, if you want to see back issues, go ahead and visit www.thereptiletimes.com. And then that's where you can go ahead and enter your email address and you can sign up um, and get that sent to your email inbox for free on the first of every month. Um, and then that's it. That is how you set up and take care of a bumblebee arrow frog. Um, that's our setup video for the week. We'll see you back here next week.